Good morning guys and welcome back to a new video here on my channel. My name is Claire and welcome. It's a truly, truly beautiful day here on the South Downs in Hampshire and behind me in the distance you can see beautiful Kingley Vale. All of these yew trees here. It's absolutely enormous, very ancient part of the South Downs. So Kingley Vale is a very magical place with some of the most ancient new trees. And Kingley Vale is actually where we hold our pagan ceremonies. Our little clan is called the Guardians of the Grove, and the Grove being the beautiful Kingley Vale, which is indeed the place where they sign the Magna Carta. So it has a lot of historical value. It is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful forest. And the fascinating thing about these wonderful beautiful big old trees is they're actually all related to each other and they just span for miles let me show you i'm on the furthest point however we could walk all the way round so scanning round if you go all the way round and then down there so over the top of that hill and down is the grove where we practice and hold our lovely pagan ceremonies which I miss very much in lockdown and in the far far distance down there you can just about see the Isle of Wight and Portsmouth so before we get into the harvesting part of this video as always we're out in the forest and we are going to show you some beautiful nature get some sunshine into your life wherever you may be at the moment show you how to forage and I'm just going to show you some lovely things from my world here. That's a cool den, isn't it? So good morning, yes it is a different day and yes it has snowed, it is so exciting. So yesterday we didn't actually do any foraging, we just sort of got a bit carried away with the sunshine and exploring in the forest and it was just a really beautiful day. So I hope you don't mind, but lo and behold we woke up this morning to a magical wonderland, it's so exciting. I mean this is the little bit of joy i think we all needed so a beautiful sunny day yesterday a beautiful snow day today so we've been playing this morning with the children they are absolutely frozen cold so foraging in the snow let's go <laughs> if you want a top tip for the winter basically winter time is a really 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 good time to know where to find what you want because you're going to just have all of the dead plants, all the dried out plants from summer. But it will be, if you get to know those plants, you'll be like, oh, there's this, there's that. I'll know that for the next spring or summer. So it might not be so obvious when everything's growing and right in your face. And even though it's snowing, we can recognize my friend, of course. This has been in all my videos lately. And this, of course, is ground ivy. So we will just pick a few of these little friends. And look, there they are. Once you get to know the shapes, you can just bring them back. Look 
Das habe ich gebekommen. Beautiful. Look at that lovely root. If you've got the patience to sit and cut all of these spines off, um, it's probably a bit easier in the snow, but be careful. Then you can actually eat this part here. Oh, there you go. It's actually a lot easier in the snow. They seem to be a bit more brittle. This part is actually edible. Be careful, they're very spiky. It tastes exactly like celery. Don't eat the needles. <laughs> that is actually very yummy. It is exactly like celery. You can juice it, you can make soup of it. It's just another fabulous food. And also if you're thirsty, um, they used to obviously use this if they were running out of water in the fields in the olden days. And there is one more beautiful big thistle root for food. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> So there we go guys, survival foods that our ancestors would have absolutely relied on and that's the thistle, completely edible from root to tip. You just have to be so careful with the thistle, I have to stab myself in the finger. But um, you know, if you've got the patience to sit there chipping off those vines, you've got a lot of stalks which you can actually use, maybe fried in butter or you can juice them, you can eat them straight from the plant, you can even eat the root fresh, you don't have to cook the root. Um, again, very nutritious plants, uh, well, well worth bothering with. Um, I absolutely love this root, I think it's my favourite. Hi guys, um, it feels like I think it's been about two weeks since I picked up the camera last. I have been so unbelievably busy, but it is Friday and we are having an early end of the week. It's been such a busy couple of weeks and I've got so much to tell you about. But for now, we're going to get a little afternoon forage in and I want to tell you about everything that I've been doing for Rewild. There's lots and lots of exciting things to tell you about. so. I will look forward to doing that, but right now we are just going to go to the woods because I am forever obsessed with my little friend's mushrooms. So we're in the forest now because I have already foraged some wood ear mushrooms and some scarlet elf cup mushrooms, but I wanted to come back today because I had a feeling, and I don't think I'm wrong, that we're going to get the last of the velvet shank today. Luckily, where we've left so many to grow, they really are coming to the end of their life now because the whole of their tail, or stalk even, the tail, <laughs> the whole of their stalk is now going black. But uh, they're a good size for eating. So, perfect, we can harvest these ones. Lovely. Good morning guys, right this video is getting quite long because I think this is now the fourth weekend I've shot some little parts for it or something, maybe the third. Anyway, we're out in the woods again, I've got my new Rewild merch on, I'm absolutely loving these jumpers. So if you go onto the website you can find the tops and the hoodies and they have two different designs. 
So we're still sourcing ingredients for um, some of the recipes I want and we are in the woods and I have just found ourselves some primrose. So I'm going to actually take the whole plant I want from root to leaf. It's quite hard to identify the primrose at the moment if the flowers haven't come through. So be very careful, not all things that look like primrose are, some could be foxglove, a very uh, easily misidentified look-alike which will probably kill you. Know your leaves if you're not going to find the primrose with the flowers on. Here we have a lovely little green patch of baby primrose and I'm going to want to try and get the roots and some of the fresh green leaves because it's a really lovely winter edible and I'm going to be making a soup with this. So I'm going to harvest some of these into my basket right now. So I gave Noah the uh, orders to find us some scarlet elf cups and he has, well done you. These are edible and they are going in my recipe. I've already foraged some of these recently. So, I mean, they can be the ruby or the scarlet elf cup. The only way to actually know is if you pop it under a microscope, one will have more matted sort of fibers on the outside. This one, however, whether it is the ruby or the scarlet, makes no difference to us when we're foraging because they are actually both edible. Go pop that back where you found it. Well done. Wonderful. So this is lovely. There's lots of roots. So from root to the actual flower on a primrose is fully edible. These nice young plants. We shall collect a few of these. Obviously remember on public spaces and so on unless you have permission it is actually illegal to dig up roots. We are in a private forest, we are allowed to do this before anybody gets too concerned. There we go, that'll do. That's a really nice little batch of fresh primrose. So if you look at the primrose, you'll see there's lots of lovely little tendril roots there. So it's really got a lot going on in the root for flavour, nutrition. And here are the little primrose leaves. Like I say, be really careful that you don't pick, pick a baby foxglove, especially before it's flowered. But if it is in flower, you should have some small, delicate, pale yellow flowers to go with the wild primrose. Have you found us another one? Talk about beginner's luck. Wow! Look at that beautiful scarlet elf cup. That is absolutely beautiful job. Well done you. That's gorgeous. So here's a plant that you may misidentify thinking that you have found yourself some primrose and it would be easily dung so it does look very similar. This actually is a foxglove and we really don't want to be eating this plant. They used to use this for heart medicine but it is uh, it's one of the most toxic dangerous plants we have here in the UK so be very mindful not to be picking any foxglove thinking it's primrose. So can you see what I'm looking at? This is how sharp your eyes need to be as a forager. We certainly have hit the jackpot today because there is one of our little friends. So let's go and have a look. So look, they're all growing here and we've got a beautiful big specimen here. Let's just pluck him off because he's ready to eat. I love them, they're just so cute. Look at that beautiful specimen. That is absolutely phenomenal. I'm really looking forward to making a dish for these later. And these will be growing all the way into spring now. Right, look at this. Oh, <laughs> I saw them first. <gasps> They've gone over because they are very dark. However, they've been eaten alive. That's a pretty fabulous haul. But these ones, for me, I don't like them when they're quite so dark. Yeah, I don't actually like them when they've gone this dark and their whole sort of foot. The velvet foot's gone all that dark, so you look underneath. They look a little bit, uh, like nature needs to have those ones. Okay, we've just found a beautiful big log stack here. Absolutely loaded with these beauties. Of course, we are looking at the velvet shank. And just for one more time, let's talk about the velvet shank. Let's take one. There we go, right. So obviously you don't want to misidentify these little friends and as long as you've got a velvety black foot, no ring, white gills, it would be safe to say you probably have the velvet shank. You must learn what a sulphur tuft is and you must learn 
most importantly, the funeral bell. But once you get the hang of those two, you will be able to come and enjoy foraging for these little beauties. We have found a foxglove growing on the sides and I've also just picked a primrose leaf so you can probably see how very easy this would be to get wrong. However the primrose has a much rounder top. Let's just pick this one. If we look at the leaves side by side you can see the foxglove has a more pointed top, has slightly more serrated edges and the primrose is rounder and to know what's really going on, if we turn them over... Okay, so the primrose veins, as you can see, have the main stem up and then the little veins go out to the edge of the leaf here, whereas the foxglove, the veins run up to the very top of the leaf, you see? They go out, these go up. And you can see from the back, actually, the, how much more pointed the leaf of the foxglove is and the primrose a lot rounder. But if you really want to get that ID right, look at the veins. If they're running vertically towards the top, that's a foxglove. More out to the edges, primrose. So it's really useful to know because as they're young, it's actually quite hard if you're not familiar with them and you thought, oh, you might think that's a nice primrose ready for food. And it's not, it's foxglove and it will do you a lot of harm. So here we go. This is the primrose. Okay, looks really similar until it gets its flowers. If you're not sure, just don't pick it until they get their flowers. And there's the foxglove, very similar. So this video has taken some filming. It's taken a few weeks. Um, and that is mainly because I've been so busy with Rewild. We've obviously got our lovely new merch. I'm sure I've mentioned that already. We also have a new learning academy on the website. And I've been getting up about four o'clock in the morning every day to work hard on that. Um, so I've been working really hard on creating an online foraging course for you guys. And it's gonna be fully supported with videos, PDFs, loads and loads of information. I'm gonna take you a whole year through one world year of me foraging and world crafting. And if you're interested in that, you should come over to the website. Signing up as a Reworld member is super easy. And it's just £4.99 every month for the whole of this year to help you get out, enjoy nature, not just wander through it and wonder what everything is. We're going to teach you everything you need to know to have a fantastic year. Right, brilliant. So there is a primrose in flower. So this is a very distinct flower and they are edible, the flowers, the leaves and the roots. And these were a really important part of our survival going back through ancient times. Um, there's a lot of interesting folklore around the primrose. They are very closely associated to fairies and uh, goddesses and there's a shield bug. Hello friend. He's like, would you go away? That was, my, that was my house. You go back to home. So yes, there you go. This would be the best way for you to ID one safely is looking for those beautiful little yellow flowers. They're very, very distinct. I just wanted to show you something. If you're ever around the edges of fields, and you may notice, so we've got nice green, and then if you notice, this is extremely yellow and bleached out. This is, of course, ground ivy, which should in fact be green. <laughs> The reason I'm showing you this, this is a really clear indicator that you are somewhere that's being sprayed with pesticides and this would be the worst place to be harvesting any type of food from. So if you spot yourself lots of yellowing plants near farmland, absolutely avoid, okay? If like us you want to find some Scarlet Elf Cups, because they are going to be in season now, from now till spring. And they're such a lovely winter mushroom to find. They're really cheerful. Um, and I think when it comes to kicking them, because they're quite a hard mushroom, you'd do well to sort of parboil them before frying them if you wanted to. 
Um, so yes, if you're looking to find some, you're going to need forest floor, which has got a lot of decaying sticks and branches. Um, so it needs to be kind of moss covered and have a lot of decaying wood on the ground because they will be found growing in that decaying wood. Our mushroom hunt has been amazing. 